Today, I will discuss about classification of igneous rocks. I will cover this topic under the following hats, introduction, present classification, mineralogical basis for classification, classification scheme for plutonic rocks, acid igneous rocks, basic igneous rocks, ultramafic igneous rocks, felspathoids bearing rocks and volcanic igneous rocks and lastly the conclusion. Introduction, igneous rocks are classified on the basis of mineral content, rock chemistry, texture of igneous rocks and geological setting of the rocks. Every classification in wide use and serve a different purpose. These classification are based on descriptive parameters. These parameters may or may not have direct genetic implication, but all are useful for purpose of description, communication and comparison, direct correlation between mineral and chemical classification is not possible because of the influence of pressure, temperature, volatile content and rate of crystallization on the mineral species and solid solution variation in minerals which are present in rocks. An overall subdivision of igneous rocks is based on general occurrences, volcanic igneous rocks are those formed at shallow depth. They are fine grained to glassy except for coarse grained phenocryst of minerals formed at depth before eruptions. Hippabasal igneous rocks are intrusive rocks that solidified at shallow depth or nearly 1 kilometer depth. They are normally fine grained, may contain phenocryst and occur as dikes or silk. Plutonic rocks solidified at depth greater than 1 kilometers. They are medium to coarse grained, extrusive igneous rocks erupted onto the earth surface and all volcanic rocks are comes under that intrusive rocks are subdivided into plutonics and hippabasals rocks. <music> Present classification. The most recent attempt for uniform classification scheme was initiated by the International Union of Geological Sciences in 1969, the member of the subcommission on the systematic of igneous rocks reported through their chairman Stickinson in 1973 and their findings are the basis of the classification used here. Their work was confined to plutonic rocks.
the criteria upon which the classification is based involve the grouping of all minerals into five categories. First categories that is Q denotes quartz, A denotes alkali feldspar that includes orthoclase, microclean, cenidine, anorthoclase, an albite with anorthite percent 0 to anorthite percent 5. P denotes plagioclase, anorthite 5 to anorthite 100 percent. F denotes feldspathoids that includes nepheline, leucite, analcite, sodalite, etc. M denotes mafic minerals which includes olivine, pyroxene, amphiboles, mica, opaque, etc. There is also a fundamental division of rock into three main categories based on the relative abundance of the mafic and felsic minerals. Thus, first A that is ultramafic equal to mainly containing mafic minerals, second basic and intermediate equivalent to mainly contain mafic plus felsic minerals, C that is acid mainly contain felsic minerals. As mentioned earlier, one of the major problem is to account for alkali rich rocks, alkali bearing minerals mainly potassium and sodium can occur throughout the whole range from ultra basic to acid. No consensus has been reached on the classification and the tendency is to use a variety of special names. The intermediate rocks also pose certain difficulties since they shadow the boundary between basic and acid. On the basis of mineralogical criteria, it is possible to construct a series of triangles. The various percentage field accounts for the major rocks types. The choice of minerals at the triangle apex is determined as first acid igneous rocks consist mainly of light felsic mineral with less amount of mafic minerals. They are classified in term of quartz, alkali feldspar and plagioclase feldspar. Second, basic rocks contain less than 90 percent mafic minerals and usually more felsic minerals mainly plagioclase that is calcium sodium plagioclase. They can be classified in the five ways. First, plagioclase, pyroxene, olivine. Second, plagioclase, orthopyroxene, clinopyroxene. Third, plagioclase, orthopyroxene, olivine. Fourth, plagioclase, clinopyroxene, olivine. And fifth, plagioclase, pyroxene, hornblende. And third major division is your most but not all ultra basic rocks or also ultra mafic rocks that is based on the relative amount of olivine, orthopyroxene and clinopyroxenes. Now take up the first category that is acid plutonic rocks. Now see the diagram on a screen that is triangular diagram which is also known as QAP diagrams. See the different section numbered 1 to 16 and the different rock types we can observe is first quartz rich granitoids, second alkali feldspar granite, third granite, fourth adamellite, fifth granodiorite, sixth transamite, seventh quartz alkali feldspar cyanide, eight quartz cyanide, nine quartz monjodiorite, ten quartz monjodiorite, eleventh tonalite, twelve alkali feldspar cyanide, thirteen cyanide, fourteen monjonite, 
15 monjo diorite and 16 diorite oblique gabbro. If you will see right from alkali feldspar granite towards diorite, the plagioclase, if you will move from there, the plagioclase usually increase and the rock type is your diorite in composition which is also comes under intermediate category because in this case plagioclase feldspar is more. If the variety of plagioclase is your calcic sodic then usually we are moved towards more intermediate type and if the mafic mineral usually the pyroxenes are present then that is known as gabbro if plutonic in condition. Now take up the second rock type for classification that is your basic plutonic igneous rocks. Classification and nomenclature of gabbroic rocks plagioclase plus orthopyroxene plus clinopyroxene plus olvin plus hornblende present in major amount along with very minor amount of your biotite, garnet, spinel. Altogether, these are nearly more than 95 percent. First category is your gabbroic rocks composed of plagioclase, pyroxenes and olvin. Second subdivision of gabbroic rocks into gabbro, orthopyroxene gabbro, clinopyroxene norite, norite etc. Third gabbroic rocks that contain hornblende and these all are based on Strickensen 1976. Now take up the first classification, see the triangular diagram on a screen based on plagioclase, pyroxene and olvin and now we can observe the following rock types that is number 1 an orthocyte, second leucogabro or norite, third olvin leucogabro norite, fourth leucotractolite, fifth gabbro norite, sixth olvin gabbro norite, seventh tractolite, eight Mela gabronorite, ninth olvin malagabro or olvin malanorite, ten malatractolite, eleven plagioclase bearing ultramafic rocks. Second, that is plagioclase orthopyroxene, clinopyroxene. This, these assemblies usually present in all important basic igneous rocks. Now see the triangular diagram on a screen, we can see or observe the different rock types which are first an orthocyte, second leuconorite, third clinopyroxene leuconorite, fourth orthopyroxene leucogabro, fifth leucogabro, sixth norite, seventh clinopyroxene norite, 8 orthopyroxene gabbro, 9th gabbro, 10 melanorite, 11th clinopyroxene melanorite, 12th orthopyroxene malagabro, 13th malagabro, 14th plagioclase bearing pyroxenites. Now third C category that is plagioclase orthopyroxene olvin. Now we can observe the different rock types first based on triangular diagram first an orthocyte second leuconorite third olvin leuconorite fourth leucotractolite fifth norite sixth olvin norite seventh tractolite eight melanorite ninth olvin melanorite ten Malatractolite, 11th plagioclase bearing ultramafic rock. Now, D, the main composition is your plagioclase 
clinoparoxin olvin. If you will see the triangular diagram on the screen, now we can observe the different rock types that is your anorthosite, second leucogabro, third olvin leucogabro, fourth leucotractolite, fifth gabro, sixth olvin gabro, seventh tractolite, eight malagabro, nine olvin malagabro, ten malatractolite, eleventh is your plesioclase bearing ultramafic rocks. Now, next important assemblies if hornblende present in basic igneous rocks, then we can draw the triangular diagram based on plesioclase, pyroxene, and hornblende. On the basis of the triangular diagram, we can observe the different rock types that is, first anorthosite, second leucogabro or norite, third pyroxene, hornblende, leucogabro or norite, fourth hornblende, leucogabro, fifth gabro or norite, sixth pyroxene, hornblende, gabro or norite, seventh hornblende, gabro, eight malagabro or norite, ninth pyroxene, hornblende, malagabro or norite, ten hornblende, malagabro, eleventh plesioclase bearing pyroxenite, twelfth plesioclase bearing hornblende pyroxenite, thirteen plesioclase bearing pyroxene hornblendite and fourteen plesioclase bearing hornblendite. Now, the third major classification that is your ultramafic rocks. Classification and nomenclature of ultramafic rocks mainly the main important minerals which are present in ultramafic rocks are olvin, orthopyroxene, clinopyroxene, hornblende and with minor amount of biotite, garnet, spinel altogether more than 95 percent, opaque mineral less than 5 percent. On the basis of the mineral present, we can divide the ultramafic rocks into two major types. First, ultramafic rocks composed of olvin, orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene and second, the ultramafic rocks that contain hornblende is Strickensen 1976. Now, take up the first group based on the mineral assemblages, olvin, orthopyroxene, clinopyroxene. Ultramafic rocks mainly two major types, first pedotites and second pyroxenites. The ultramafic rocks which contain nearly 40 percent olvin comes under the pedotite categories and on the basis of olvin orthopyroxene triangular diagrams, we can observe the different rock types which are first dunite, second hertzbergite, third lehajolite, fourth verlite. Altogether, right from number 1 to 4, all comes under pedotite categories. Uh, fifth, olvin orthopyroxenite, sixth, olvin westerite, seventh, olvin clinopyroxenite, eighth, orthopyroxenite, ninth, westerite, and ten, clinopyroxenites. Right from your number 5 to 10, that is olvin orthopyroxenite, to clinopyroxenite, all these rock types comes under pyroxenite categories. Now, take up the second part, which is the mineral which contain usually in ultramafic rocks, that is your olvin, pyroxene and hornblende. On the basis of triangular diagrams, we can observe the different rock types, which are number 1, dunite, second pyroxene pedotite, third pyroxene hornblende pedotite, fourth hornblende pedotites, fifth olvin pyroxenite, sixth olvin hornblende pyroxenite, 
7th olvin pyroxene hornblendite 8th olvin hornblendite 9th pyroxenite 10th hornblend pyroxenite 11th pyroxene hornblendite and 12th hornblendite the basic rock classification on the basis of mineral present we have already observed that is plagioclase pyroxene both pyroxene clino and orthopyroxene olvin and hornblend these are the major important minerals usually we can observe in basic igneous rocks and important rock types we observe especially your anorthosite norite gabbro tractolite and hornblendite if you will join the ultramafic rock classification that is based on olvin orthopyroxene and clinopyroxene if you will join the two apex with basic classification that is olvin and orthopyroxene line with the triangular diagram with your olvin orthopyroxene and plagioclase similarly the olvin clinopyroxene line if you will join with basic classification that is olvin clinopyroxene and plagioclase and downside that is your clinopyroxene and orthopyroxene line if you will join with triangular basic diagrams that is your orthopyroxene clinopyroxene and plagioclase now we can see in center the olvin orthopyroxene which is ultramafic igneous rocks and all three corner sites we can observe the different basic igneous rocks on the basis of depth we can see that ultramafic rocks which are occur at greater depth with high temperature where the volatile is very less and crystallization rate is very slow with influx of SiO2 it means when magma move towards upper side the SiO2 react with olvin and olvin change into pyroxenes and usually the plagioclase also occur at slightly lower temperature and depth as compared to ultramafic igneous rocks now we can observe the different ultra basic igneous rocks that is known as tractolite both tractolite we can observe it in clinopyroxene even in orthopyroxenes so on the basis of this diagram we can conclude the ultramafic rocks is just like a primitive igneous rocks which evolved and give rise to primary igneous rocks or derivative igneous rocks the ultramafic igneous rocks classification that is mainly based on your olvin orthopyroxene and clinopyroxenes if suppose you will see right from your uh, dunite to hartsbergite lahergeolite and valeite especially the lahergeolite we can see the different composition bearing lahergeolite especially the spinel lahergeolite garnet lahergeolite and even in sometimes we can see the kyanite bearing lahergeolite especially in ultramafic rocks even we can observe micro diamonds if they are associated with kimberlites so these ultramafic rocks are very important because they contain high mg composition and mainly the dunite bearing rocks these four right from your dunite hartsbergite lahergeolite and valeite 
all these are comes under pedotritic composition or also known as pedotritic rocks. Even in some times, we can also observe in these rocks the hornblende bearing. It means the activity of water is slightly higher as compared to previous category where the olivine and only pyroxenes are present. And if hornblende is present, it means we are slightly moving upwards so that the activity of water is increased and pyroxene plus water react and form amphiboles. Now take up the next IUGS classification that is for acid volcanic igneous rocks. On the basis of QAP diagrams, we can observe the six important rock types. Number one, rhyolite, second, rhyodacite, third, decite, fourth, trachyte, fifth, tracheandesite, that is also known as letite, and sixth, andesite. Now, next important IUGS classification that is for undersaturated plutonic igneous rocks which contain felspathoids, bearing rocks. Now, the first on the basis of FPA diagram that is felspathoid, plagioclase, alkali felspar diagrams, triangular diagrams, we can observe the different rock types. Number one, isolite, naphthalenite, lucitite, phonolite or tephritic. Mainly, if naphthalene dominated, then it will be known as naphthalenite, lucite dominated, known as lucitite. Second, naphthalene, diorite or gabbro, tephritic or basinite. Third, naphthalene, monjodiorite or monjo, gabbro, phonolytic, tonsomatic, basinite. Fourth, naphthalene, monjocyanite, tephritic, phonolite. Fifth, naphthalene, cyanite. Sixth, naphthalene bearing diorite, andesite, gabbro, basalt. Seventh, naphthalene bearing monjogabbro, basalt. Eighth, naphthalene bearing monjonite, letite. Ninth, naphthalene bearing cyanite that is also known, known as trachyte, 10 naphthalene bearing alkali feldspar cyanide trachyte. Now take up the next modules that is conclusion. In this modules, we have discussed about the present classification for igneous rocks that is IUGS classification for acid, basic, ultramafic, volcanic, acid and felspathoid bearing rocks. The IUGS classification provides the clear idea about the varieties of igneous rocks, especially the platonic igneous rocks. Thank you very much.